And we'll pull the right hand keys off. Now, as so I'm pulling this apart, now it's it's been a while since it's been serviced, and in addition to the tarnish, we've got a lot of dust bunny buildup on the mechanisms and if, if this were a clean oil and adjust it would make me want to scrutinize the the surfaces of the pads a lot more and the integrity of the pads um, but since it's an overhaul all the pads are getting changed out um, it, it's just another cleaning factor at that point the way these mechanisms work. On these pinless mechanisms, the end of the rod, end of the hinge steel, or the arbor, depending on who you're talking to, is cylindrical and it approaches the king post which is here and as it threads in it goes into the king post the head of the screw locks in place and it stops just short of halfway. And at this point, if your fingers are small enough, mine are, I can barely get that with the trill key in the way. This is where you can really check the king post and see if there's any wiggle there. And that feels really solid. So that tells me any wiggle that I was feeling there before was in the key itself. So I will take care of that wiggle by fitting the key a little bit better on that hinge. And you have the same deal coming in from the other side with the right hand keys and that hinge will go in halfway, almost halfway and stop and we'll check that in a minute. The other version of the Brugger design, the hinge goes all the way through the king post and sticks into the top of the F sharp key. So it does double duty of supporting the left hand keys down here against the king post and the right hand keys as it goes through. Different concepts, pros and cons to everything. Um, both are very fine designs. Um, and just remember if you want to really annoy flute makers, call it the Adolf Sachs design. Um, so, I'm going to check. Next thing I check is how the individual keys feel on the steel. So typically I would clean off the steel really well and make sure I'm not pushing dust bunnies into it. You know, typ typically I would the I would do this after I've cleaned up the keys, but for the sake of um, home cooking. 
I put the key in approximately the place it's going to be and see if I've got wiggle in any direction. And, you know, law of conservation of matter, the outer diameter of this is going to be slightly smaller than the inner diameter of this. But we're talking diameter wise, probably two ten thousandths of an inch. That is point zero 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 two inches. So if you were to take a piece of paper and stand the piece of paper on edge, cut it through the thickness of it ten times, and that's how thin the difference is here. So I'm checking the fit here, the F key, the F sharp key. These keys can be problematic, where you have part of a hinge here and part of a hinge here. Um, there is always a little bit of flex in there. So, you know, just holding the key like this, there's gravity working on this. So it might not line up straight. Yeah, it's got a little bit, just a hair. Of interference so I'm gonna have to scrutinize this a little bit closer that might be just enough to balance out against the spring tension because the spring hooks on here so if it's a little bit out this way and the springs pushing that way it might be all good so th these are the very very finite details the handmade flutes require um, there are flute makers who will take a key like this at a spring tent, spring catch here and they will intentionally make this not straight. They will flex that just a little bit so when the spring catches the spring straightens out the key. And this is this is really inside baseball stuff, but uh, you know that's the level of precision that we're talking about to to make these things work well. So I will go through all of these and check the um, the fit on them. There are certain keys on these various mechanisms that are known to be problem children. Over time, you know, like this one for example, the B flat key, you've got spring tension here, but you've got tension from the thumb key here, torquing things, the F sharp key here, torquing things, the A key here, torquing things. So there's a lot of stuff going on there just from the act of playing that can slightly tweak out of line and then you can get situations where um, if this gets this connection here gets tweaked just a little bit all of a sudden that opening or that area that's supposed to be perfectly cylindrical turns slightly oval and it gets a little bit grabby on the hinge uh, so th these are all the little details that we have to consider when we are going through a finely made flute. And I'm looking at the condition of the bumpers. These are the factory original bumpers um, with little material here and there. Lots of dust bunnies. In general, the condition of the pads is not bad. Well, that one's kind of bad. But lots of just diagnostics starting out. 
if you take a handmade flute and you jump right into it and say it's going to be the same as the last one I did, guaranteed it's going to butt you in the butt. So you have to cover everything up front and know what you're getting into before you skip a step you didn't know you, ha you were going to skip. Because um, going back and doing it later is a big pain. Because so many things rely on everything else to work well. Next thing I look at, pivot screws. On mechanisms that are not pinless, there's going to be a pivot screw at the end of the right hand keys. But all, almost all of the trill keys are going to be uh, pivot screw on both ends. So the thing I look for, well first I'm, I check to see if there's a wiggle. I check both ends, see if there's wiggle in this direction. And then as I'm backing out the screw, I'm not putting any pressure on the key, but I'm watching very closely to see if that key moves, if it's going up and down and up and down and up and down as I back out the screw. That will be indicative of either a bent screw or uneven wear or some other malady that needs to be addressed. And that looked like it came out pretty well. And inspecting this pivot screw under magnification, I see a little bit of wear that I don't think I need to be concerned about. I will check it under the microscope and see. Looks a little bit rough, but that'll probably clean up some. And the same deal on the other end. Just watch or feel if there's any movement as you're backing out the screw. The vast majority of handmade flutes are going to have conical pivots. Most of them are going to be 40 degrees. Some are 45. Um, but you do have some uh, occurrence, especially in older instruments, where it's either a cylinder or pretty close to a cylinder with a very shallow taper on it. And those are the ones that are prone to getting bent. Um, and they can be a real headache to deal with. And G sharp key is pretty uneventful. Some designs have it held in with a pivot screw, but most have a you know, pivot screw here or here, and the other end has a built in bearing surface. Another thing that I'm looking at is the condition of the springs. Most of the springs nowadays on handmade flutes are some sort of gold alloy, white gold alloy, usually 10 carat, 
you will find platinum alloy springs here and there. I think Miyazawa uses some platinum alloy springs. I forget specifically. But the point is you want to look for signs of wear. This one's got a, a ding in it and I don't know if that's going to create a friction point or not. Um, this the spring on the G-sharp keys uh, usually sticks into a hole at the bottom of the rib that's underneath the post. Um, so the, that little ding on the spring might be inconsequential, but I'll have to uh, I'll really have to scrutinize that and see. Uh, likewise, all of the springs on the body. Uh, you want to check those for wear spots, places that uh, things are going to hang up and drag. Because the springs, as the key rotates, the springs will slide just a little bit, either you know in the cradle as it rotates around it, or depending on the geometry, a little bit axially so you don't want any you know steps or rough spots or divots where the key can uh, bind up on it 